Welcome back to the channel everybody, Ed Bud here, your favourite shoe enthusiast. So today I've got a double purpose video for you. I have the first in a two part series of the running shoes of 2019. So each and every YouTuber out there has produced some type of best of video, best road shoes, best this, best that. Um, I didn't want to uh, seem like a slouch. So what I'm going to do for you today is I have the first in a two part series of my running shoes of 2019. So very much a review, 2019, what's worked for me and what hasn't. With everyone producing all those other videos, I didn't want to feel like I was left out, set aside, put out to pasture, give my marching orders, don't give up your day job, not me. One thing I certainly have is tenacity and a will to move forward. Do stay tuned, later on in the video, I will be letting you know who's won the running shoe giveaway and also picked up that runners up prize also. So stay tuned. So I'm gonna document for you in a whistle stop Yuletide sleigh ride, every running shoe that I've used this year so far and give you a quick review on them for better or for worse. So January 2019 kicked off with the charred flyer. I use the Vaporfly 4%. These really have been a revelation to me. Very, very light, a slightly narrower shoe. Certainly had to work on my uh, running gait, um, improve that, improve the cadence a little bit. It's seen me net a number of personal bests this year over the 5K and the 10K distance. I love the fly knit on this shoe. It's certainly wonderfully breathable. It was very enjoyable using this shoe in hotter temperatures. Certainly running in the UK, you need a shoe that has some traction, which will certainly work in wetter conditions. About 170 miles in these now at the end of 2019. I feel there's still a little bit of life in them yet. I'm not gonna put them out of pasture just yet. Certainly make a really good tempo shoe at this point. There's still some really nice spring in the midsole. The snaps perhaps not quite as there as the more uh, recent or less used versions of the 4% that I've got, but certainly not going anywhere. We'll keep this one around. Um, certainly not gonna be cutting it in half or anything like that. I mean. That's just a crazy idea. As I say, a little bit of the snaps disappeared from this one, and certainly the midsole and outsole is certainly looking a little bit weathered now. In fact, I think I first used these in a race environment at the Wellington Monument Race, which was pretty much a year ago, just coming up maybe this weekend. It's a bit like a relationship as you sort of grow older together. The love's still there, despite you both looking a little bit tarnished from weathering the storms of life. So these remain in the rotation, at least for now. Moving on, we got the Solomon Sense Ride. It's actually quite light, really, this shoe. I always thought of it as being a little bit heavier, a little bit on the heavier side. So I use these on a couple of different 10K races, mainly trail-based sort of stuff, although this is a kind of hybrid shoe, sort of road and trail. Bit of light work around Cornwall while I was on the holidays, on the vacation, up and down some of the lanes there. Certainly a shoe that's protective enough for trail-based work but also light enough to utilize on road. But certainly a shoe I found a little bit tight. I really wish I'd gone up maybe half a size in this one. Uh, even adjusting sort of socks and things like that still felt a little tight. And thus it seemed to stay on the shelf a little bit more than some of the other options I had. I've shifted these across to sort of indoor climbing with my daughter and occasional hilly canine activities. So 34 miles done on these, but they're certainly staying as a casual shoe and retired off the rotation. The Pegasus 35 is up next. I use these for a lot of sort of more easy pace sort of miles early in 2019. I happen to quite like the longer tongue here, although that was a bit of a talking point amongst people. They could have kind of trimmed it down, which they did do in the more recent Pegasus 36. It is certainly a great shoe. Lots of nice memories uh, in this one. Used as a casual shoe at the moment though. I think stable yet nimble enough really for all sorts of things. I mean, you could race in this one. It's not that heavy. Good lockdown with the fly wires. I use these between sort of 10K, anything up to about 13 miles really. And never had an issue with it. Always comfortable. We picked this one up for a bargain price at the back end, I think it was, of 2018 for 60 pounds, you can't lose. So as I say, gonna retain these for casual use only now over the Christmas period. Goodbye, old friends. The Nike Zoom Fly is up next. I really enjoyed this shoe. I'll tell you what, just holding this shoe up now makes me remember how much I enjoyed running in it. Kinda of makes me wanna get out and use it again. So much lighter than the Zoom Fly 3. 
I don't know whether it's the Kushlon, it's just that little bit lighter, not quite as dense perhaps, but just feels really, really light in my hand. I picked these up again at a bargain price from the Nike store. Uh, I think they were about £60. They had some discount offer one day and I just thought, I kind of like the green, the olive green, the white motifs, the lime green stripe. I like it. How are you doing? So I predominantly favoured these for 5K runs actually. The Kushlon midsole, I feel is just a little bit more kind of rigid, responsive. I just feel it's very subtly different than the Zoomfly Flyknit or the Zoomfly 3. Maybe it's that carbon infused plate in the midsole, a little bit different to the latter iterations of the shoe. Certainly feels like there's a little bit more lockdown, something a little bit more reminiscent of the Pegasus 35 really across the forefoot. So with those fly wires, they do seem to just give a little bit more lockdown on top of the foot. So certainly prefer these over the Zoomfly 3 and getting them at a bargain price. I think I'm still gonna leave them in the rotation for the early part of 2020. 110 miles in these then, they stay in the rotation. Yeah, for 100 miles, they're looking pretty good as well. Moving into March and April time, again managed to pick up a bit of a bargain. Got the Pegasus 35 turbos for around 80 pounds. I think it was March, in fact, that I got these. I very soon got 100 miles into them and upwards, I think they're now about I think these are about 190 miles now. I've seen no issues really with separation here at the heel area of the foot where the two foams combine together, no problems. I've ran in these anywhere between six miles up to the half marathon distance. So I find these to be a fantastic faster paced tempo shoe. But then again, I've used them on all sorts of runs as well. There was one time I was going out for like a 10 miler, more minimal pace really, but ended up meeting up with some of the running club guys and doing some hill work on some light trails in these and they shaped up just fine. I find that the Pegasus Turbo Series does wonders in terms of recovery uh, with the legs. Your feet, your legs just feel fantastic after using this shoe. I think it's that combination of the two midsole materials just really works. That Zoom X and React combination really does work wonders together and lowers that kind of recovery time needed after longer runs. Certainly looking at retiring out these now though, as obviously their predecessor appeared this year, and I feel it's a slightly better shoe. That's not to say I didn't enjoy this shoe, as you heard earlier, I put a lot of miles into it. I just feel it's a little overly present, certainly in the heel area. I don't need quite so much kind of protection and foam in this area here. Occasionally the tongue did cause me a couple of little issues. I do feel that this shoe perhaps is shrinking a little bit though. Certainly looking at it, you can see it's kind of curving up here. I don't know, perhaps something here in the uh, forefoot area on the toe box perhaps is shrinking, but I don't know if any of you had any experiences with that. Please let me know in the comments. So great shoe, but gonna retire it. Perhaps to some casual use over Christmas. It's a good looking shoe. It's a good looking shoe, isn't it, Clark? So moving on, one of my favorite shoes of the year so far and still now actually, is the Gyakuso Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. I think this is a wonderful looking shoe. Everything about it, the colorway, the small, tiny little changes here and there that have been employed, it really does look good. It's not all the same upper. There are some slight differences here. It does feel very slightly, I guess, it's kind of thinner. There's a slightly different texture really to the to the upper on this shoe in comparison to the standard Vaporfly 4%. It perhaps feels a little smoother um, in the upper. Then you've got this heel counter area, which has kind of been placed on the outside of the shoe. It does feel different. If you, I've got both of them in hand here, it really does feel, there's a little bit more stiffness in the heel area. But this one, it simply isn't the same. Yep, definite difference. That toe box material I found just a little bit more breathable, a little bit more flexible. Really wonderful shoe, I was so glad to pick this up. Uh, I think I've only put about 50 miles into it so far. Certainly looking at doing some more racing in the Gakuso Vaporfly 4%. Very rare shoe as well. People have kind of pointed this one out and said, what on earth is that? And I've had to sort of explain to them um, about how I managed to come by it. But really fantastic looking shoe. So certainly staying in the rotation for this year. Uh, this one saw me pick up a personal best over the half marathon distance at the Heron Half Marathon earlier on this year in June. 
So around May time, I managed to pick up the Nike Terra Kyger 5 trail shoe. A very enjoyable shoe. Used this for a few trail races when the weather was slightly warmer. Not overly heavy, despite the fact it's got quite a bit of protection built into it. Um, there's a bit of a plate here in the sort of forefoot area. It doesn't cover the whole foot, forefoot area, but certainly in terms of trail shoes, the React midsole really seems to work. Gives you a little bit more spring. Certainly other trail shoes I've utilized this year or tested out haven't really felt quite as comfortable, I don't think, as this one did. I love the colorway. I really liked the lacing system as well. It was really, really easy to get a good lockdown over the top of the shoe. Nike included some sort of slightly different laces with this one. They seem to have a little bit more give to them. That works really well for this shoe. Use this for the Stourhead 10K event. Uh, I think that was back in May of this year. And it worked out really well. Uh, it's kind of a multi-terrain event. There's some stuff on road. And then there's some stuff through a forest. So you're going through some quite squishy mud woodland areas and the Terra Kyger 5 delivered for that race. In fact, looking back at the times and the splits for that race, I think I ran the first mile in six minutes, 15 seconds wearing this shoe. So um, if you're kind of in a quandary about whether to get it, whether it's going to enable you to sort of reach some faster paces during trail events, then don't worry, it certainly can. I think it's an average of about seven minutes, 11 seconds uh, per mile across that 10k event, uh, which is I think about 10 or so seconds off of my average for the Heron half marathon. So this shoe can certainly move. It's not too weighty, uh, but protective enough um, that it's going to work for you during a trail race. Lots and lots of miles left in these, so they stay in the rotation for 2020. So it was a bit of a coup for the channel when I managed to pick up the Pegasus 36 earlier on this year. I think it was about June time, maybe the end of May. A real coup for the channel though. We got these early, they appeared on a website. I got in there quick and managed to get them in for a review and get them up to 100 miles in no time whatsoever. Plowed lots and lots of miles early into these very refined shoes. They dropped the weight a little bit from the Pegasus 35, the previous iteration. There's a slightly less pronounced flare in the heel and of course they made some adjustments to the tongue here. They reduced the weight of that. I think that was mainly where the weight reduction was. You guys know the midsole very well from this one. It just works. It was the same one that was on the Pegasus 35. A really great daily trainer. I think there's about 110 miles in this one, so not going anywhere. Gonna keep it in the rotation for some easier days coming up over the next few months. Perhaps a little bit too breathable over the toe box area to use right now as temperatures are starting to drop in the UK. But gonna keep it in mind come March or April time. So the end of June saw me smash my personal best at the 10K distance at the Immortal Sport Martok 10K. Came in at 42, 41 in that race using the Gakuso Vaporflies. That was probably my favorite race of the first half of 2019. I managed to get the pacing just right I think I went out about six minutes, 32 for the first mile, really ideal conditions. Mainly flat course too, a bit of elevation there. I think it was probably about 140 foot, something like that in terms of elevation. I think I've only beaten that uh, personal best over that distance later in the year during the Salisbury Half Marathon. So there was a real shoe avalanche, uh, the middle of 2019, and I managed to pick up the Pegasus Turbo 2. Certainly, in terms of the channel, the Pegasus Turbo 2 reviews that I did have been really, really well received. Lots and lots of comments on those. And it seems to be a shoe that really divides people. For me, it's one of the best shoes of 2019. I've not experienced any of that kind of separation here. The back of the shoe had no issues there. I really enjoy the less present kind of heel area, less foam, it's just less material there. The tongue, certainly an improvement, lovely and thin, almost uh, sort of like a neoprene type material. And the lacing system just works exceptionally well. I think this lacing system actually does appear on the Infinity Run that I've recently reviewed. Toe box area was a little bit more voluminous, a little bit more room in there for the toes. So it's a shoe I used for lots and lots of training across the year, at higher paces, some interval work, some tempo work but also for some racing later in 2019. 
I've used them between three miles and 13 miles or so, perhaps even higher. I think there's a couple of runs where I went a little further than that and shoes felt really, really great. These didn't quite feel like they bottomed out at that sort of 10 mile area like the Pegasus 35 turbos did. I find this a better revision. It's just less present on foot really and just it's less for you to sort of think and worry about. There's just less on your foot. Feels more nimble. Certainly a very versatile shoe and one I highly recommend. So that brings us to the end of part one of the shoes of 2019. Please stay tuned later this week for part two. Okay, so that brings us on to the running shoe giveaway uh, recently initiated here on the channel. I wanna say a big, big thanks to all of you who entered. So onto the winners, what I did was got all the emails in and then pulled out a random number from all of those entries and the winner of the running shoe giveaway, so the Pegasus Turbo 2, is Sarah Price. So Sarah, please do look out for an email from me very soon. Um, I'll be getting hold of you to get your details um, so I can get the Pegasus Turbo 2s over to you very, very soon. Well done, Sarah. But let's not forget there was also a runners up prize as well. And again, from the remaining contestants, pulled out a random number and compared that up to my list. And the runners up prize goes to Kenny Smith. So Kenny, I'll be in touch with you as well to get across the 25 pound or equivalent, uh, depending where you are, uh, running warehouse voucher. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of you who entered. Some people in the voting section on the community page were just happy to say they just like the channel. They, they really weren't too worried about entering the competition. But thanks to all of you who did enter. I'd also like to say a big thank you to all the new subscribers to the channel. I think we're over about 2,100 something now. Uh, so we're really pushing on, really moving forward, onwards and upwards. There should be a glut of new videos over the course of the next few days as we're sort of ramping up till Christmas. Please do look out for the second part of the running shoes of 2019. And there's one more running shoe initial review to come before the end of the year. So please keep your eyes peeled for that one. Remember to like, subscribe, comment below and share with your friends. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.